Meghan Markle and Prince Harry signed a lucrative deal with the streaming giant to host and produce podcasts, estimated to be worth around 25 million US dollars, 18 million pounds, in late 2020. But the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have only released one podcast. Nine Honey Royal correspondent Natalie Oliveri has shed light on the unhappy business relationship. Ms. Oliveri said, they are one of Spotify's most high-profile clients. They signed a deal with Spotify in December 2020 worth an estimated $30 million, £185 million, but so far they've just produced one podcast that was released in December 2020. Last week it emerged that Spotify had actually taken back control of Harry and Meghan's podcast over this lack of content. It's all a bit murky there with the multi-million dollar deal. Presenter Sylvia Jeffries added, It doesn't seem like a very happy business relationship at this point. It comes as Meghan and Harry have been expressing concerns to Spotify about COVID-19 misinformation but say they will continue to work with the platform. In a statement on Sunday, the couple's charity Arch Yule said they had been expressing concerns to Spotify about the issue since the charity's inception, and continued to do so to ensure changes to its platform are made to help address this public health crisis. It comes after a number of artists ditched the platform due to controversial content such as the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, which has been known to air vaccine skeptical views. An Art Jewel spokesperson said the couple are committed to continuing their work with the streaming platform. Hundreds of millions of people are affected by the serious harms of rampant mis and disinformation every day, the spokesperson said. Last April, our co founders began expressing concerns to our partners at Spotify about the all too real consequences of COVID 19 misinformation on its platform. We have continued to express our concerns to Spotify to ensure changes to its platform are made to help address this public health crisis. We look to Spotify to meet this moment and are committed to continuing our work together as it does. It comes after Joni Mitchell announced on Saturday that she would remove her catalog from Spotify in solidarity with Neil Young. Young's music is being taken down from the platform after he reportedly offered it an ultimatum to remove either his work or the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. Following Young's reported concerns, Spotify said it aimed to balance both safety for listeners and freedom for creators and had removed more than 20,000 podcast episodes related to COVID since the start of the pandemic. It acquired the Joe Rogan Experience podcast in 2020, reportedly for more than $100 million, 77 million pounds. Stand-up comedian Rogan, 54, has previously attracted controversy for suggesting the young and healthy should not get vaccinated. Another news, bailiffs could seize assets from Prince Andrew's £30 million home if he loses his case trial, a lawyer has claimed. Virginia Jufri is suing Andrew for unspecified damages, which U.S. lawyers say could easily be in excess of £14 million if she is successful. Should he lose, he could have officers from the court arriving at the doors of his Royal Lodge home, it was reported. Lawyer Eric Fudali, who has worked closely with Epstein's victims, told there is a method and procedure for seizing assets, even overseas assets, in the event there is an award of damages and the defendant tries to avoid paying. This could include seizing bank accounts, physical property, etc. Assuming for the sake of this question that there is an award of damages against Prince Andrew, he would be able to avoid the seizure of assets by posting a bond pending the inevitable appeal. Assuming the appeal goes in favor of Ms. Jufri, Prince Andrew would either have to pay the amount owed, settle the matter for another amount, or risk his assets being seized. Andrew has continually denied all the allegations. Earlier this month it was revealed Andrew has found a buyer for his beloved Swiss retreat. Spencer Coven, a lawyer for Jeffrey Epstein's victims, says it could have been to prevent his accuser from claiming the asset should she win the case. He said, if Virginia gets a judgment against Andrew, if this went all the way through to trial and she received a financial judgment in her favor, she could execute on any properties he has the most likely being his ski chalet. If Andrew had properties in any companion country that would abide by such jurisdiction of the U.S., she can execute on those properties. If the Queen has transferred any property to him, anywhere throughout the entire world, they could try and execute on that property if successful in foreign courts. Last week the Duke attempted to distance himself from convicted sex offender Maxwell, insisting in court documents the pair were not close. He has been pictured several times since the 1980s holidaying and partying with a disgraced socialite, who also attended several royal residences. In legal papers responding to accusations from Virginia Jufri, the Queen's second son dismissed any notion they were close friends. Royal insiders say Andrew has made the ultimate gamble by demanding trial by jury, 
saying it could cause irreparable damage to the monarchy and overshadow the Queen's Platinum Jubilee celebrations.